All right, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Yuzo. Uh, can everybody hear me well? Feel free to speak out or just a type in that, that will be work. Well, thank you. Thank you for the uh, feedback. Good, good. Very good, very good. Uh, this is the ECE 360 uh, control systems or say automatic control systems and uh, 2024 20, semester. Well, as everybody knows, it's a very special time, and uh, this is my first time to offer this course in such format, and uh, hopefully it works fine. Yeah, hopefully it works fine. Um, we supposed to have 25 students, and uh, I think we are missing one or maybe two, but uh, very, very, very good, very good. Okay. Um, let me first of all share the screen of Canvas. Any trouble of seeing the canvas screen here? Any trouble? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Very good. So uh, as I mentioned the in the announcement, uh, let's pull up the uh, announcement here. Okay. So today we're going to just uh, talk about how to take this course. Okay. And because as I said, it's first time for everybody. And uh, how to be su su successful is obviously different uh, or say at least a little bit different from uh, what we should do in the regular face-to-face -face lecture okay let's emphasize those things uh, emphasize those things okay. um first of all uh, let me explain the concept of module uh, look at here the vertical module list here uh, vertical menu list here has a modules Okay. You should be able to see it from your screen as well. But what do I mean by modules in this canvas? Um, if you have some experience, you probably uh, understand the modules means nothing but the topics. Okay. Uh, most of you guys ever taken at least one course from me. Um, I always use topic, topic one, topic two, and so on, so, so forth to cover different subjects. This modules okay, means nothing but those topics. Okay. So today is lecture one under the roof of module one. Okay. If you click module here, you see different modules. Of course, currently I just posted and published two modules. Okay. And uh, now we are in module one and uh, in module one, we, you have some resources like this uh, document, a syllabus, and this Gantt chart for progress. And also, uh, as I mentioned in the syllabus, I, I will try to record the lecture and post it here for you to review. Okay, very useful material, um, very useful resources for you. And uh, assignments, if any, now, however, Maybe you have noticed there's no homework for module one. No, the first homework gonna be for module two. And uh, more modules gonna be populated in Canvas. So by clicking the modules here, you will see them, okay? Again, module means nothing but a topic, okay? Okay, this is the uh, concept of a module. And then going back to our uh, announcement, so let's uh, talk about these three things today. Okay, mainly talk about the three things. Okay, first, how this online course works, and second, how is the teaching and the exam exam style. Okay, uh, third one is how to study. Okay, let's talk about them by learning the module one together. Okay, together. But first, uh, we have a very important document here. Okay. Um, how to be successful in taking online ECE 360. Uh, as I said, the ECE 360 is first time offer uh, online. It's, it's a brand new, quite new uh, things to me as well. So um, I just summarized something I at least so far feeling like uh, very useful in, and important to all of the students. So. Um, if any questions, feel free to interrupt me, okay? okay. This is one of my styles, actually. Feel free to interrupt me, especially online, and no one gonna complain to you about that because 
you're not be able to see my face. Okay, so if you if you stop me and bring up an immediate question, that's absolutely fine. Okay, that's absolutely fine. I, I won't blame you. Okay, and so let's go over this document together. As you hear, the first two paragraphs is basically saying, well, some students like it, some students don't. Okay, and there's also some students uh, kind of neutral. Okay, and they all have different reasons for their preference. But uh, in my opinion, engineering major courses to be offered online is uh, is not optimal choice. It's not optimal choice. However, due to this pandemic, we don't have a better choice uh, since the classroom capacity is 25, okay? And we have to seat every other seat. Uh, however, we have 25 students. It's, uh, you know, without a bigger room, actually, uh, without a double size room, face-to-face -face regular lecturing is not quite safe. It's not safe. Okay. Um, but anyways, uh, online or say hybrid course uh, requires self-motivation, okay? sense of responsibility and the capa cap capability of independent study. Okay? It's emphasizing um, from students and you need to do more. Okay? Actually, you need, to, you need to do more. Yeah, you need to do more. And this course is 100% online, okay? 100% means what specifically? Now, first of all, the uh, lecturing is live lecturing, okay? And it's a synchronized, a synchronized offering uh, teaching, okay? And uh, I have online office hour available from the uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, we will talk about that a little bit later. And also the on online exams, okay? all the exams are online. Okay? There's no face-to-face -face, uh, uh, sections. Okay? So here, let's check the syllabus together. Okay? Let's check the syllabus together uh, to see what information we should be very careful for now. Description of the course, okay, uh, just a race rule. Uh, prerequisite. Well, I believe this is not a problem for any one of you. A textbook is is this. And if you're using the eighth, uh, eighth or even ninth, I think it, it, up to date version is eighth edition. If you're using that uh, edition, that's fine too. There's some reference books you can go. Excuse me, you can go to, and. Uh, my office is at Pioneer Hall 211, which is um, not quite useful this semester. But my phone number extension is 2750. If you think it's necessary, you can call me. But obviously, uh, this is the uh, major media you can reach out to me. Okay. I check my email quite, quite often. So feel free to email me. Okay. Uh, by this email thing, I, it brings up one thing I want to remind you. Uh, I don't know how often you guys check your email, but uh, my suggestion of the frequency of checking your email is at least two or three times daily. Okay. Okay. At least two or three times a day. Okay. Morning, afternoon, and evening. Maybe not right before going to bed, because in case you receive some bad news, it's going to bother your sleeping, right? So you don't want to do that. So maybe not right before sleeping, uh, but in the evening, okay? maybe uh, after your dinner, okay? At least two to three times a day, okay? And then lecture, synchronous, synchronous online, okay? live lecturing. Time is same as the time given uh, or say allocated previously for regular face-to-face -face lecture. Okay, if uh, if anyone of you notice that, and still remaining as Monday and Wednesday, one to two twenty. Okay, 
and the office hour online uh, through Microsoft Teams. And then the Monday and Wednesday, 2.30 to 4 p.m., which means what? what? Right after our EC360 lecture, okay? Right after EC360 lecture is my office hour. Um, the course learning goals, okay, you can read through. No need to know the details, not yet. And the course policy here, uh, course policy here. Uh, this is pretty much still emphasizing the importance of those three things in the module one. So you want to read through them. And uh, whenever you need to recall some information, go back to module one for those information. Okay, through the semester, I mean. Okay. And the lectures and office hours. Uh, uh, the lecture is synchronous online, and uh, there is no attendance policy. Yeah, there is no attendance policy. This is pretty much the same as my uh, regular face-to-face -face lecture. However, also as same as my regular face-to-face -face lecture, attendance is the most important thing for the students to do good in my course okay, is the most important, not one of them, but the most important one. Okay, attendance highly, 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 highly encouraged. Okay, and since this course is online. And uh, as I said, uh, we try to record it and post it in, in the canvas. Uh, you inevitably might feel more reason to kind of be absent on the uh, live lecturing and then take your evening or other time to review the recorded lecture yourself. And I understand that you, you might have more reason to do that. However, that the, the fact or the, the, the truth is online course, even though it is recorded, it requires the real-time attendance even more than the regular face-to-face -face lecture, okay? This is a fact, not my personal opinion. I, re, I received this conclusion based on what, what happened in last winter, I mean the second half winter semester as well as the last uh, spring 20 spring semester in where obviously i had to offer uh, teaching online completely right i received this information uh, conclusion from from those 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 uh time period i found attendance is very 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 important okay. i mean this is a ece major course it, it no offensive, but it's not quite the same as some other general education courses. So uh, please be noticed about this, okay, about this fact. Okay, attendance in real time is extremely, extremely important. And uh, where is it happening is, as you know, Canvas conferences, okay, and by those lecture time. And uh, I would try to record the uh, lecture and then post it to the uh, uh, Canvas modules. And it will be also available in the Canvas conferences too. Okay. So two locations to assess the lecture, okay? To access the uh, recorded lectures, okay? Online office hour. Uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, uh, I think you just need my email address to reach me. I think so. Uh, if otherwise, please let me know. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be, be available online uh, during that office hour time. If you come, you can just message me first, and then I will call you, or you can just directly call me. I prefer the uh, first way. Now, the reason is uh, from your message, I can tell who comes first, right? And then my my principle is uh, first come, first to serve. And so so that I'm making it to be what? One-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? One-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? Office hour is one-on-one, -on -one, okay? 
this is also what I uh, concluded um, based on the past teaching ex experience. Students prefer uh, such private uh, time and, and space to talk about the uh, questions. Okay, so message me. Uh, when, when you come, just message me. Okay, I can call you. And of course, use both speaker and microphone to, to attend like you did and today for the lecture, okay? The homework assigned for a given module or say topics or, or say chapter because each topic correspond to one uh, particular chapter to the textbook, okay? So three concepts talking about pretty much the same thing, module, chapter, or topic, okay? And they do by one week after the conclusion of that module. Okay, uh, homework there. And then no credits gonna be given to miss uh, by exams or project reports. And uh, you need to be uh, following the uh, student handbook, the policies, integrity policy, et cetera, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> Here, hardware and software required. Obviously, you need a, a reliable computer as well as the network connection, okay? And hopefully, you have no trouble about these things and because you can, you can choose to come to the uh, on-campus library or anywhere a quiet environment to take this online course. So I'm assuming uh, we are good. But in case you have some trouble, uh, don't forget this this uh, number five. Okay. Reach out ITS to check out a laptop. Okay. They're going to be able to help you. Okay. Uh, but anyways, uh, the midterm exams require installing and use of Respondus Lockdown Browser and a webcam. Okay. Uh, very important. Please have them ready. By second week. Okay, no later than by second week. Okay, have them ready. Okay. Respondents, lockdown browser, and uh, webcam. Okay. Uh, I think most of you guys have more or less experience with, with this thing, right? There, uh, if not, you uh, we, we will see. I have provided some uh, uh, tutorial material in the module one as well. Okay, we will go over those. We will go over those a little bit. And uh, remember, always use speaker and microphone to attend uh, lecture or office hour. And also another possible, I won't say trouble, but another thing you probably wanna uh, think about is the use of MATLAB. EC360 requires using MATLAB, uh, not only the final project, but also the regular lecture. You don't need Simulink. The EC360 is, is not doing anything in Simulink, you, but you need to do programming in MATLAB. Okay? Though that uh, script file, you need to do some pro programming to watch the generated um, plots, graphs. Yeah. Your design, your design work for control system is upon the using of MATLAB. Okay, so uh, please be fully aware of this. Again, reach out to ITS if you have any technical trouble. Here is the list of homework. Now, once again, homework one is for module two. Okay, so our module one doesn't have any homework and correspond to one particular chapter in the textbook. Okay, it's the homework list. And of course, much, much more importantly, here is the graded distribution. Okay, from where you can notice that the homework does not count towards your final uh, total grade. And the homework, of course, is helpful as your exercise, uh, extra exercise but remains less important than attendance of the lecture, okay? I, I, I didn't exaggerate any, any fact, okay? I, previously, I have said, attending the online real-time lecture is the most important thing you need to do to be 
able to do good in my class, okay, in all of my classes, okay, is the most important one. So homework, of course, helpful, uh, available from the textbook, and uh, they are listed over there. However, they're less important, much less, okay, much less. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, so when we're uh, doing the homework, like the problems in the exam, are they going to be similar to what's on the homework or the uh, examples and the slides? Actually, is uh, this is also one of my styles. Uh, the exam problems going to be closely related and therefore similar to the in-class examples. Again, in-class examples. And how close they will be to the homeworks? Well, maybe some of the homework problems are close, and some of them are not. Okay, this is uh, again uh, make me emphasize the importance of attending the real time lecture one more time. Okay, attending the lectures, you won't miss anything you need for doing good in exam. Did I make myself clear enough? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's uh, go over the syllabus uh, more. Uh, we have four exams. I called them all of them as midterms. Uh, the reason is all of them are not cumulative. Uh, therefore, the very last one, I call it midterm four rather than final exam. Okay. None of them is cumulative. So all of them are called midterm. Okay. So four exams and one final project using the ML app for programming. Okay. Total 100%. And the grading policy. Um, uh, most of you guys know that my. Uh, Passing grade is is lower, uh, five percent lower than uh, maybe other faculties. Uh, but my A is like a two percent higher than the uh, other faculties. Okay, so once again, sixty-five percent is the passing rate, and ninety-five is the uh, A is the A. Okay, but generally speaking, I uh, my classes are are always having quite a bit uh, A students, let's say, uh, who are regularly and consistently attending the lectures. <laughs> not a surprise, and not a surprise. And here, uh, I'm using red color to emphasize, and this is something new uh, in my syllabus. This is something new in my syllabus. And uh, the pandemic, uh, more or less, and in many ways, uh, mess up our lives and, and uh, works and uh, learning and the teaching. Okay, so what we can do is just uh, well, this lecture is completely online. Probably not quite need to emphasize this, but I still put put, put this here. Okay? So remember to put your mask on okay? whenever you go. To the campus, okay. And remember this. Remember this. Uh, because here's the thing. I heard if if anyone, any students violate this rule, it considered as the violation of the student code of conduct. And to be honest, I'm not quite familiar with the uh, the details about students' codes of conduct, but if few like a serious right so uh so remember to to follow to follow the rule okay some uh, uh acknowledgement and uh that's it about the syllabus okay going back to the how to be successful this document yeah, move on Next, the document we need to check out is the Gantt chart. I call it Gantt chart, but actually is a timeline. It's a timeline, okay? It's a timeline. Uh, so it pretty much 
is a game chart showing you from the day one to the final week, uh, what are we gonna do? Okay. So today, as you know, we're at this particular cell, uh, Monday, uh, module one, and module one just to have uh, today's one lecture, okay? No, no, no other lectures. And uh, nothing special, uh, color yellow from this legend, you know, this is just a regular lecture. Okay. And the red color means well, you need to be very careful. It's online exam. Okay. We have four exams. Okay. Uh, the last one is midterm four, which is arranged at the uh, final exam time, which you can check online uh, to see. I think it's on Wednesday. Yeah, it's on Wednesday. Yeah. It's on final week on Wednesday is our very last exam. Okay. And uh, module two is containing three lectures, okay, three lectures. Uh, we like the gray color, and this gray color is due to the what? Labor Day, right? It's due to the Labor Day. So, and this gray color is due to the Thanksgiving, okay, due to the Thanksgiving. Of course, as you know, uh, after Thanksgiving, everything is online, but uh, we already online, so I'm not differentiating them. Okay. I'm not differentiating uh, those cells, no need. And uh, uh, we have a project going to be assigned by the end of, this is what, module seven, uh, module seven, okay. Uh, project assigned by the end of module seven. And it's a design, uh, MATLAB design uh, project. And due um, by here, uh, Monday of week 15. Monday of week 15, okay. Kind of have uh, what, uh, one, two, three, uh, three and a half weeks to do it. Okay. Should be enough, should be enough. I'm, I'm making the due date of the final project apart from the, uh, in terms of time, apart from the final, final week, the, the midterm four, so that the students, uh, won't have too much uh, things due at the same time at the end of the semester, right? So uh, this is how the uh, project is arranged. Okay. Where are you at and what you are learning? Okay, go to this Gantt chart to know. Does it make sense? Through the entire semester. Whenever you're kind of a confused or, or a little bit doubt what you're learning and uh, where you're at, Go to the scan chart. Go to the scan chart. And the nice thing about this this semester is the only nice thing maybe okay, is that we don't need to worry about what snow days, right? <laughs> we don't need to worry about it. We're already at home. Okay, we're already online. Okay, we're already online. Okay, so no snow days bothering. Okay, so I'm not expecting any change for this scan chart. Okay, I'm not expecting that. This is the uh, Gantt chart, okay. And going back to the Scott documents, let's move on. Uh, once again, emphasizing the attendance. Okay. Uh, understand you might think uh, you have the recorded lecture. However, uh, according to what happened in last winter and spring, um, learn the recorded lecture by yourself, asynchronously, offline, is like uh, watching a YouTube video in where you can barely have enough attention and the concentration. Um, however, I respect your choice if you choose to uh, be absent on the asynchronous lecture and, and, and uh, uh, learn everything offline asynchronously yourself by watching the recorded video, I, I'm okay with it, okay? Don't take me wrong. You are not losing any credits, okay? You are not losing credit directly, directly from the absence. You are not, okay? I respect what your choice, okay? I just uh, emphasized the importance of attendance, okay? Right. Here, two locations for you to access the recorded lecture. One is in the conferences. You should be able to see it. Another is I can upload it to the uh, modules as well. 
both in uh, Canvas. Then you have to go to Canvas. Uh, of course, I'm thinking in the modules, I can upload it, uh, a link rather than a video. I'll give you a link which direct you to a YouTube, uh, direct to you to my YouTube channel. Okay, believe it or not, uh, by such time, uh, all of the faculty are more or less becoming a YouTuber. So this is the uh, recorded lecture. And midterm exams need you to use this. Uh, Respondents lockdown browser and webcam. And final project we have discussed. And next, uh, here, and that's the one tip. That's our one tip. Uh, I know uh, nowadays they like the tablets is is very popular. Uh, people are used to use uh, cell phone to watch the uh, watch everything. However, I'm telling you that cell phone sometimes cannot correctly open the files from the canvas. And this is this is what happened in, in the past. Ever happened? Okay, to my students, they reported to me. They let me know. Okay, that's why I'm telling you this. So especially the Excel sheet, for example, the Gantt chart, you're checking the schedule, which is obviously very important. So you don't want to read something incorrectly presented, right? So what do you want to do? Download it to your local drive, okay? A laptop or a desktop, whatever. Download it and open it okay, by your uh, Microsoft software, okay? rather than opening it from the cell phone, okay? It could present to you incorrectly or misaligned information, especially the Excel sheet. Be very careful, be very careful, because it happened, okay? And here, uh, very important, how to do well in the, in the exams. Uh, uh, Wally has asked a, a little bit about this uh, question. So here is telling you, uh, you, you want to repeat and the practice and in independently doing so for those provided in class examples. Okay. Uh, in class, I will give you some time to do real time exercise. And after class, before the exam, you're going to do some prepare, right? And when you prepare, remember to repeat them. Okay. Repeat them independently. Okay. But don't watch the, uh, the, the provided solution. Okay. Don't watch what you have done in the past. Just independently to do it all over. Again, okay, repeat it. That's, that's, that's the uh, best way to prepare for the exam as well. Okay, we will talk about more. Here, uh, regarding the canvas, if you have any, uh, any shortage of knowledge of the canvas, I provide a, a link here. That you can go to here to learn more about canvas. And the textbook could be purchased uh, from this website. Second thing uh, I'm going to say is the communication. The communication. Online and hybrid course requires more communications rather than less. Okay, this is uh, this is, again another fact rather than my opinion or my preference. No, it's all about the facts. Okay, and office hour available and Monday, Wednesday. Microsoft Teams, one-on-one -on -one basis, and the first come, first serve. Please message me when you arrive. Uh, if need more help, of course, email me uh, for another appointment. Okay, that's, that's, that's not a problem at all. And also check your email and uh, Canvas announcements. Generally speaking, I, I write a lot of announcements through the semester for any updating, uh, for any updating or immediate message. I, I'm writing Canvas announcements a lot. Okay, check those. Um, as far as I know, once I write a uh, announcement, you guys can immediately receive an email, right? Is that right? Any confirmation? Okay, good, good. Okay, if so, then then that's good. Okay. 
I write a lot of announcements for updates and immediate information as the message. Okay, so check check your email. Yeah, check your email. You should be able to uh, avoid missing them. Okay. If you have any questions, and reach reach out as soon as possible. Okay. Don't accumulate cumul accumulate your questions and the problems. And uh, if you're free to use discussions and the chat, I leave these two menus available, uh, visible to you guys, because I make some of the uh, menus here invisible, obviously, but I left the discussions and the chat uh, available for you guys to, to post anything you want. And then there's also some other student support you can, you can reach uh, from this link. Okay. But basically, uh, communication, uh, let me, uh, let me talk a little bit more about communication. Um, to a online course, okay, to an online course, not only my particular this online course, okay, to the general online course, the worst thing a students can do is what? You guys know what? The worst thing, okay, because I have been talking about a lot, what you should do. And now I want to also mention what you shouldn't or at least try to avoid doing, right? So what's the worst thing the student could do to an online course in general? Disappear, okay, disappear. What does it mean by disappear? Um, barely attend the lecture and never showed up in the office hour. Because online course is something that you you absolutely able to or 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 say is feasible for you to kind of do everything on your own without even reaching out, without talking to the, the instructor. You absolutely can do this. Okay, it's feasible. However, this leaves a very big space for you to not doing anything like that. What I'm what I'm saying is, in a regular face-to-face -face lecture, let me ask you: Are you going to arrange your working hours at the same times as your lecture time? I doubt it. Right? You have class on Monday and Wednesday, one to two twenty. You won't arrange your work during that time, right? However, since it is online, also since this is recorded. You might want to do that, right? You might want to arrange some work hours, build up your working hours <laughs> in the daytime, right? You probably want to do that. You, know, you at least have some uh, plan or intention to do that. And uh, I respect your choice. Again, I respect that. However, my suggestion is don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. You want to attend the live lecturing. The review, the recorded lectures, and just for you to review, maybe right before the exam, maybe anytime you're free, you want to recall something. Okay. Those are supplemental materials. Should not be relied completely. Okay. So again, the live lecturing. The online synchronous lecture is the most useful, most efficient time and the place for you to do uh, to study the material. Okay, um, but, but again, if you're absent, you choose to be absent. That that that's really fine. I'm really really fine. Okay, you're not going to lose any points credits directly because of that. However, I'm just telling you that's not the best choice, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, okay. but, but, but it's fine, okay. So, but uh, if you study yourself, um, still you wanna ask questions, okay. Hey, you study yourself, that's fine, and still you wanna ask questions. So do not disappear, that's my point, okay. That's the bottom line, do not disappear. Because that's again the worst thing a student could do to an online course. Okay, that's the worst thing. Okay. The worst thing. Yep, disappeared. Okay. 
Um, here I talk about the exams, online exam, how to take online exams. I, if you, um, many of you have experience from uh, from last winter and uh, maybe spring, even summer. Uh, but here I uh, list uh, uh, summarize uh, something here. Okay, so, uh, first about the uh, midterm exams. Okay, as you know, we have four exams. Okay? They're scheduled in the Gantt chart. You can you can. You can Go to there, and also be careful in the canvas. Different modules, you will see the specific exact time, exact time. I mean the date and the time. Okay, you can check the modules, canvas modules for the exact date and the time. Because in the Gantt chart, there's no exact exact time. Right? There's there's only exact date. There's no exact time. Does it make sense? So you want to go to the Canvas modules, okay? Because, for example, uh, let's uh, have an example. Look, look at this. When is the midterm one? Monday of week five, right? right here. You know the date. September 28th, Monday. And uh, the, the, the exact time is what? But generally speaking, it is the lecture time. Right? We, we try to keep that. However, you want to make sure that you want to confirm that you go to where? Modules. Midterm one will appear at the end of this is what module three. Okay, because it is right after module three. So I place the midterm one at the end of the module three. For example, this, well, I don't have module three here, but but uh, let's assume this is module three and assignments, you gonna have homework two and exam, midterm exam one. Does everything make sense so far? All right, thank you, Kali. Okay, and so this is the about time. Thank you, Noah. Okay, this is about the time, okay. Of course, atten attendance of the exam, well, there's no negotiation, okay. There's no negotiation on this. And uh, the exam will be graded in details and returned to students for reviewing and questioning, okay. Uh, <laughs> and obviously, I'm not able to keep your exam history exam this time. I'm not able to do this, right? So you have uh, plenty of time to, to ask a question about the grading, okay? Obviously, I can't do this this time, okay? Told you, it mess up my teaching a lot, right? Uh, besides of the graded exam, uh, as you know, I always also provide a statistics of the overall performance as an additional feedback uh, from where you can you can tell what letter grade you, you, you are basically at. Okay. So this is another thing, feedback you will receive. And the best way to prepare the exam, okay, I highlight this. So, uh, how many things? Three things, right? First, again, attending the lecture, okay, real-time one. Second, Follow the review. Now, what, what does it mean by provide a review? Uh, most of you guys know what I mean, uh, but uh, uh, to those who haven't taken any course from me yet, uh, one week ahead of the exam, I will have a so-called review lecture. Okay. Well, the lecture is not completely about review, but uh, part of the lecture is review. A part of the lecture is review. One week ahead of the exam. In the review, I'm gonna pinpoint what subject, what problem, even example, gonna be covered in the upcoming exam. Okay, I'm gonna pinpoint that. Okay, give you a detailed direction how to prepare, what to prepare, okay, what to prepare. And to those things, to those information, to those review, what you wanna do is just independently, repeatedly practice the in class examples or some homework ex exercises if you want okay 
So one, two, three, three things, how to prepare. Uh, these things remain same as the uh, as my regular face-to-face -face lectures, as many of you know. So this is how to prepare the exams. Okay, uh, hundred percent online exam. Uh, here, uh, this is also same as the regular face-to-face -face, uh, lecture for me. Only mode of choice and or handwritten problems okay on two formats okay. no true or false no like uh, filling the bl blanks no right. only mode of choice and or okay handwritten problems because sometimes i only have handwritten problems i don't have mode of choice this is the format and how to conduct the uh midterm exams first of all it applies again, uh, lockdown browser. And if you want to learn more about lockdown browser, here I provide you a link. Okay, these materials. Go ahead and uh, please have the have this thing ready uh, no later than the uh, second week, uh, or say no later than the than the uh, end of the second week. Okay. And here is another thing I want to. Uh, because if you recall in the regular face-to-face -face exam, uh, because because of the presence of the proctor, you can ask real-time questions, right? You can receive answers as well. But what I'm going to do is emulate that effect or feature. What I'm going to do is during the exam time, I'm going to uh, hold a live co Canvas conference Okay, during the exam time. What you want to do is Join that conference and then start your exam. I will set up the um, lockdown browser so that you won't be kicked out. Because if I don't set up anything, uh, you're opening a, uh, you're joining a conference, real time conference, and then you try to attend the uh, uh, lockdown browser exam you probably gonna be kicked out i gonna set up to avoid that okay you can join the conference real time meantime you're taking the exam so that if you want to ask any questions just to speak out but before joining the conference guess what remember to keep your microphone on unmute it otherwise inside of the the exam under the lockdown browser you won't be able to Unmute it anymore. Does, does it make sense? You have to keep it on. Okay. Because you can't get out of the lockdown browser to, to unmute it. Right. So lower down your, your speaker because everybody is having microphone on. So you, you, you're going to hear probably the background noise. Okay. And here, summarize the general uh, taking procedure here. Uh, a little bit complicated, but actually it is not. Okay, um, you're gonna do, you're gonna conduct the uh, Canvas quiz. And the quiz name like this: midterm exam one, two, three, four. And then there is saying uh, requires respondents lockdown browser. This is the name. Okay, this is the exam name. And then you have one hour and thirty minutes to do it. Okay. Upon finishing all of the problems but without uploading the handwritten works, okay? because you have handwritten problems, right? You're not uploading any handwritten problems yet. You need to submit this quiz or say this exam in the quiz. After that, you take photo or scan your handwritten works and then convert it, combine into one, only one file, okay? Not multiple, only one a PDF file, okay? The format has to be PDF. And then you upload this PDF file to another uh, Canvas assignment called this name. Okay. So you just um, be careful different names uh, is, so that you know where to conduct the exam and where to upload your answer. Okay. This uploading will be given another 15 minutes. Okay. Another 15 minutes. So the entire Exam time is one hour, 45 minutes, and uh, 
including one hour and 30 minutes of the conducting and the extra 50 minutes for uploading uh, your answers. Okay. To make you become familiar with all of these, just a said, okay, I'm gonna have a, a test run exam. Okay. Won't be graded, of course not. Okay, it's a test run exam. So try to attend that to become familiar with how to conduct the exam and how to receive the graded exam. Here, I want to emphasize one thing. Some of you took uh, 318 last semester, uh, winter semester with me. So you know what I'm talking about, all of these, except this point, how to receive the graded exam. Because back then, what I did is individually email the graded exam to all of you, which made me exhausted. So to avoid that embarrassment, I this master start to using this feature, which is available in Canvas assignment. I'm gonna automatically upload the graded exam back to you. Okay, so you're gonna receive the graded exam back from the Canvas rather than email. This is the uh, significant difference uh, between this time and back in uh, winter semester. Does it make some sense? Is that clear? Let me ask someone who took took my. John, are you there? Me? Hello? Yeah, is, uh, I only have one John <laughs> this time in this class. Yeah. So it does it make sense. You understand what I'm talking about? This difference? Sure. Okay. So. Yep. So you're gonna you're gonna receive this graded exam in Canvas, okay. not email. I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um. So if we're doing uh, digital notes, this would in not be able notes. to be used for respondus lockdown, or no? Uh, hold on. You are doing digital notes on a tablet. You mean? Yeah. And then during the exam, what you can have is one cheat sheet. Okay, as okay. one paper, as one paper, physical paper, print printed out paper. On paper, you write uh, the, the notes or whatever you think you're gonna use during the exam. So this 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 part is same as the regular face to face exams. Okay, so you're only allowed one uh, cheat sheet. Uh, cheat sheet. Or formula sheet, whatever you call it. Okay. Okay. Rather yeah. Than, yeah. Rather but, than. Um, yeah, you go ahead. But are we allowed to use our tablet to do all of our notes digitally, so we can just send it from our tablet, or no? Oh, you're saying your cheat sheet is on the tablet. Well, I can print that part off. But what I'm saying is, like, my whole notes, I just write on it, and then I can submit it via that oh your excuse me so you're saying your answer your handwritten problem answer is written not on the paper but a uh, tablet and then submit yeah. that yes physically written on it and it's stringed all together in a pdf uh i know this might be easier way for you guys to upload the answer however it's a very bad way to avoid possible cheating um I doubt any faculty would like it. Um, I, <laughs> at least for now, my answer is no. <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Use the physical paper. Uh, use the physical paper. This, uh, how to avoid possible cheating has been heavily discussed in the department as well as the college uh, this entire summer. Uh, I was told by my colleagues <laughs> by many different ways to cheat. And, uh, electronic digital cheating <laughs> is one of them. <laughs> so it's like, what do you say? <laughs> so so uh, uh, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying you're gonna cheat. Okay, you you're. I don't think you're gonna do that. But the, but to avoid any possibility. Of, of such behavior, I think my answer for at least for now is no. 
So now we basically finished the uh, this entire document. And if we go back to module one, uh, we notice we also gone through the syllabus and the Gantt chart. And the recorded lecture I will upload it later. So basically, we are done with this module one, well, except some basic knowledge. Uh, we're going to spend another 20 minutes to talk about the uh, structure of the knowledge. Okay. I'm going to talk about the structure of the knowledge okay, uh, momentarily. But before that, uh, any questions regarding the, this class, regarding the policy, regarding the style? Any questions? Please speak out. Any questions? Anything you think uh, you not quite clear? Anything like that? All right. Thank you, Kevin. So let's move on. Let's move on to the uh, knowledge. Okay, let's move on to knowledge. Before that, let's go look, take a look at the uh, this scan chart one more time for the coverage. Okay, we have up to nine modules. Uh, module one is just introduction. We don't need to content. So from module two to nine, we have eight subjects per se. Eight subjects. So what they are about and how they are integrated into the entire uh, control system course, I will introduce these things, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, can you guys see my uh, doc camera here? Let me adjust it. All right, good, good, good. Okay. We're gonna start writing and and if possible, again, the best way to, to take this course is attending real-time lecture and also taking the notes in real time. Okay, taking the notes in real time. The last difference you can feel between this online course and the regular face-to-face -face course, the more you're going to obtain and learn at the end. Okay, let me repeat this, this thing. The less difference you can feel between these two formats, the more you can learn. Okay. Now, uh, if possible, uh, taking the notes is the right thing to do. Okay. Let's start. Okay. So, module one, intro. This course is actually mainly about what? It's mainly about a system, okay? A system, I'm plotting a system block diagram. Yes. This is called system block diagram. You don't need to know any details because I'm not teaching any yet. I'm trying to present you what this course is about. Okay. Overall, this course is about what? Okay. What you're seeing is a, a so-called uh, block diagram. In where you're seeing bench of so-called transfer function. PF. In future, whenever we see TF, means nothing but transfer function. What does it mean by transfer function? Okay. Transfer function means nothing but this. It just equals to output over input of a system or a subsystem. Let's go back to this di diagram, OK? Let's go back to diagram. What you're seeing is a bunch of connections. Um, again, you don't need to know how and what. But what you're seeing is three subsystems represented by capital letters C, P, and H. And each capital letter is representing one particular transfer function. In other words, for example, this C. 
the C is what? Is a transfer function with its output here. Because this is the output, you can easily tell that. This is the input, right? So the, the output of the C, which is here, divided by the inputs of the C here, equals to transfer function of this subsystem C. This is how you understand this. But following the same concept, pH are also different particular transfer functions. And each one of them represents one particular subsystem. Okay. Subsystems somehow connected, interconnected together to form a uh, entire system like this. So this entire system has its own what? Total input and total output. Make some sense. Total input is here. Total output is here. Okay. They can easily tell. And the C here, I'm using different color. Okay. C here. P here. H here. As I said, representing different subsystems. But what are they? And we can kind of imagine, okay. Even the total input here, we have the total output of the entire system. And the P is what? Anyone have any guess? P is representing what? Any guessing? Anyone? You can speak out. It looks like a negative feedback amplifier system, right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, what I'm saying is this is the entire block diagram can represent the general control system, any control, general control system. So uh, we don't have to specify any subsystem. So this guy, we just consider it as what? Control objective, or say the plant. That's why we are using P, okay? Control objective, plant. Control objective. With this, I think is you can easier to guess what is C, which is right before it. C is what? C is what? This is the control objective. Then what is this? Right before it was is what? Not difficult, right? Controller. Controller is controlling the control objective. Can you also, also imagine in future our project gonna gonna do what? Design, right? What the project design for? Designing the controller. Because you can e easily imagine the, the control objective, the plants, they're likely to be given, right? Give you our targets, give you an objective. Accordingly, you're designing the controller right before it. Okay. The last thing is the H. H is what? Is, is a little bit uh, abstract, but we will learn the details in future. This is called feedback. Okay, this is for feedback. What does it mean by feedback? You get the output feedback to be compared with the input. Right? The input Miners, this is miners. Okay, this is the uh, app subtraction, this subtraction uh, operator. Input miners, the feedback signal. Okay, so here, this signal is called feedback signal. Okay. Feedback signal. The feedback signal here is not necessarily equal to the output, except H is equal to unity. Okay, anyways, this is feedback, this is the output. Here, this, this guy is the output. Okay, so feedback signal compare with the input signal to generate a uh, what signal here? This is called error signal. Okay, error signal. Error signal is the input of C, is the result of comparison between input and feedback. 
Does everything make sense so far? Any questions? I have a question. Go ahead. So the H in that feedback line, is it just um, amplifying the output to put it back into, or is it like? Generally speaking, yes. Generally okay. speaking, yes. And uh, But practically, there's more features than that. So more things to be involved. But amplification is necessary and definitely major function of the H. Correct. Right understanding. Good. Good, good. So, would, would you, would yep. you ever have a plant model before the controller? Like, let's say two plant models. Two plant model before the controller. You mean here? Like, yeah, let's say one plant model before the controller and one after. Well, that's actually something we try to avoid. If you have a plan something before the controller, like guess what? You need to move your controller to move before to that plan, the second plan. You can separate plan one and that set uh, plan two. You can separate them, them two. That's okay. However, when you design controller, I never seen any any engineer design controller after one of the plans, uh, except you have some special application otherwise we people don't do that you gonna even if the input is another controller like or no does it not matter it's always you want a controller before everything yes you want to do that because you have control over the location and the controller uh, parameters right you have a control over this where to place it and how to place it and what to place right you have control over these things okay as engineer that, that's why, okay, that's why. So the input signal of the control controller is so-called error. The output of the controller is called what? The signal. What does this guy call it, this signal? Anyone? I'm, I'm seeing Sawyer is uh, typing, you can speak out. Input transducer and the controller, the system for this. Input transducer and the controller. Well, generally speaking, input transducer is before here. It's kind of how do you generate the input. And it may be considered as another system. The input, we start to consider this system beginning from the input signal. From the input signal here. And the uh, input compared with feedback generate error signal. Error signal go into the controller signal. Uh, con I'm sorry, going into the controller transfer function. And this subsystem can generate a this called control signal. Okay, control signal. This is called control signal. Control signal go into the, the plant, the control objective, and to generate the corresponding behavior. Generally speaking, we make it to be analog signal as our output. And the output goes through the feedback transfer function, this guy H, and then generate a feedback sys signal to be compared with a input signal. So this is obviously is uh, well closed loop, right? Closed loop system. What does it mean by closed loop system? That's what? Feedback. Has feedback. This is the uh, this is the uh, block diagram talking about the the overall general control system. And the rest of ten minutes, I'm gonna link these block block diagram into our modules. Okay, as uh, talking about the structure of the uh, of this course. So we have module two. We begin with module two. Okay, begin with module two. If if you recall module two, module two is frequency domain re modeling or what? I can't remember. Modeling, yes. Yeah. Modeling. What this module is about? 
is studying this thing. Studying how to come up with each individual subsystem transfer function. Module two is studying this. Okay. What does it mean? We just mentioned the CPH, they're all subsystem transfer functions. But how we come up with them individually, right? We need to study, first of all, study how we come up with individually, each one of them, right? And specifically, we're going to learn the Laplace transfer. And the function and in terms of S. Okay. What I'm talking about, if you recall, what does it mean by this? Function in terms of S rather than T. We are kind of familiar with a uh, function of T. We're going to convert it to function of S. By doing what? Anyone knows? What? Laplace. Correct. Right. Laplace. Good. If going backwards, what do we do? Inverse we... Laplace. Exactly. Inverse Laplace. Just uh, L, the negative one as superscript. This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. Okay. What are we gonna do? Module two. Module three. Module three. Um uh, module three, well, what is it? Let's save some time. Module three is block diagram called block diagram. What do we do? Uh, what do we study is how to combine multiple. Transfer function of subsystem, of course, to a total, I call it total system transfer function. Okay, this is what we're going to study. Which means what? Well, you individually got a CP and H from module two, right? You know how to model them individually. And how to combine everything together into one total system transfer function, right? Which means looking back to this system, looking back to this block diagram, total system transfer function means what? Means this output, total output, divided by the total input here, right? So this is what we're gonna do in module three. And this is actually specifically, we're gonna learn the uh, so-called block diagram Algebra representation. Can you move the paper up? Oh, sure. Thank you. Reminding. Good. This is module three. Right? This is module three. Here we go. Module four. Module four, what is the topic? Module four is time response. It's called time response. I save the name and directly go into this. Module four, we're going to study what do the system inputs and outputs look like. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna study the signal. Basically, we're gonna study the signal. Okay, input signal, what does it look like? What output signal, what we are expecting? Okay, and we probably never had a, a class called signal and systems. Okay, this is, this is so we, we need to understand the signals. Okay? We need to understand the signals. Okay, and specifically, 
uh, we're gonna study study the uh, so-called the transient and steady state value or say just a performance okay when we talk about performance that means nothing but what is your steady state value and how is your transient in future i just use s s s slash no slash s dash s to represent steady state okay so you're gonna study the uh, input and output signals module five what is it module five you got a so-called steady state error So this module, what are we going to learn? Uh, we're going to learn how good or bad is the steady state performance. We understand the transient performance concept in module four. However, we are not studying it. So I'll leave it to the later modules. In module five, we learn the how good or how bad, pretty much how we evaluate, right? How we evaluate the uh, steady state performance, right? One is transient, another is steady state. So in module five, we study the steady state, good or bad, good or bad, of course, and why, right? And why? So this is the. Uh, uh, steady state error. Uh, how accurate? How about the accuracy? Right. This is the uh, module five, and this, what is the next one? Is so called rule locus. Now this is something. This is something new. This is something new. What is a rule locus? Is, uh, is actually is learn how to design and evaluate a system. Of course, control system. Is and specifically, module two rule locus is a tool. A tool called rule locus. Okay, or we'll say the RL. Okay. Module six, we start to learn how to design and evaluate a system, control system. Okay. The tool we're learning in that particular module is called rule locus. Okay. Next module seven. Well, obviously, the recorded video gonna gonna kick in and help you if you miss the uh, the uh, notes somewhere. So you can check there for anything you miss. Next one is the design well rule locus module seven. What is module going to teach you? Same as module six. Okay. Module six is to how to design and evaluate a control system, right? So is module seven. Remaining same subject. What's the difference is this time is not talking about rule locus as a tool. We start to design controller. By this tool. Okay. Module seven is design controller. We start to design controller by this tool. Module six is introducing this tool. Module eight is frequency response. Of course, frequency response. Okay. 
module eight about still about same subjects as module six and seven. You design and evaluate a system, control system. The difference is in detail. Uh, here uh, we are learning another tool. Call it the res frequency domain response. This is also very, very useful. Very, very useful. So you can tell three modules for design and evaluate a control system. What you can what you can link to final project yeah, the final project the final project okay. last one of course we still have module nine module nine is the uh what is it uh time domain model time domain model what this module is about is uh nothing but uh, time domain modeling technique. If you go back to the module two, you, what do you see? Frequency domain modeling, right? And then uh, based on which we have module three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we also have time domain modeling technique, which is uh, could be used for advanced control knowledge or theory. So we leave it to the last module, right? Okay. I call it prepare for uh, the ones control theory knowledge. So this is module two through nine, eight subjects, eight subjects. So this is the structure of the course. This is structure I call so called. Okay, so you know which module you are doing what inside of this overall control system uh, picture. Okay, you are doing what. Module two, talking about each individual CPH, how you come up with the individual transfer function. Module three is how you combine them together. Uh, module four is um, what does the signal look like, especially input and output, right? We need to study, we need to understand the signal. Because for example, your output signal of a control system is always displayed from where? Most of the time, oscilloscope, right? Practically, you need, you need to have a kind of an expectation. What kind of output signal I'm expecting? Or say, when we see a given output signal as good or bad, how to evaluate, right? Module five is about the steady state. How do you, how do you uh, evaluate it, good or bad? Six, seven, eight, as I said, they're about designing the controller. You need to learn tools and then use that tools for designing. For designing, of course, major design work is upon the MATLAB. Okay. Last, we prepare some basic knowledge for the advanced control theory or knowledge. Okay, this is the uh, course structure. This is course structure, okay. and uh, you don't need to know the details for now, but you just have a clear logic. And the clear overall picture of the course. Okay, that's uh, what this uh, lecture for. So uh, obviously, online course is hard to to you know, control the time. But but anyways, any any questions? Any questions? Of course, you, if you are available, you can leave your question to the upcoming office hour because it's office hour now. But uh, 
if you can if you want to ask now that's fine too any anything any questions regarding this this course All right, then thank you for attending today's lecture and uh, talk to you guys on, well, talk to many of you guys in like, <laughs> in like hours, right? And the rest of you guys on Wednesday then, okay? Thank you, bye.